everyone. Um, this is webinar two for Give Local NRV. Um, we are just going to wait, um, you know, one or two more minutes uh, while people join, uh, and then we're going to jump in and talk through everything that you are going to want to know for Give Local NRV. Um, in the meantime, while we're waiting uh, for more people to join, if you could just um, locate your uh, GoToWebinar chat module um, and let me know that you can hear me, um, you know, let me know your favorite thing to do in the area, your favorite restaurant to go to, or the name of your pet, um, or your, you know, the best activity that you found to do during this uh, quarantine time. So um, anything, just let me know that you can hear me and uh, we'll get started in a few minutes. Okay, I think we're just going to wait another 30 seconds. There are still people joining. Um, it looks like a lot of you are doing some fun stuff during quarantine, which is great. I especially um, love Laureen's quarantine activity. She's having fun dressing up her cats in doll clothes, which is hilarious. And I really wish we could share pictures. Um, but keep up the great work, Laureen. It sounds like you're having a fun time. Um, but we're, yep. Probably 20 more seconds and then we'll get started. Okay, everyone, um, we are going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to the strategy webinar for this year's Give Local NRV. My name is Dawn, and I'll be leading you through today's presentation. I have a few housekeeping items to note before we jump in. First, the webinar will be recorded and posted in the toolkit um, on the Give Local NRV site under the resources tab. Um, and then you can use the GoToWebinar chat module to send across any questions you have uh, during the webinar, and we'll get to as many as we can after the webinar is over. So I have Jessica on the webinar from the Community Foundation of New River Valley. Um, Jessica and team are working really hard on all things Give Local NRV. So I wanted to give her a chance to say hi to everyone and um, you know, say you know whatever she wanted. So. Thank you, Jessica, for joining me and welcome. Uh, thanks so much, Don, and thanks everybody for jumping on the call. We really appreciate you taking the time today um, to be a part of this. I hope everyone is doing well. I've probably seen many of you on various Zoom calls or through emails in the last few weeks. And I know that um, your organizations are doing a tremendous amount during this time um, and are also looking for a lot of opportunities 
to get the word out about the great work you're doing and of course to raise money for that. So uh, we hope that this is going to be a good webinar to talk about strategies for the Giving Day, which is on June 24th this year, but also underscoring that the Give Local platform is here for you um, throughout the year. It can help you raise money now as you need it. Um, it can help with other upcoming fundraisers you may have or any time throughout the year. And so a lot of the strategies and things that you'll hear from Don today are really good to utilize at any time throughout the year and particularly now when so many of our organizations are in great need. The other thing that I wanted to share with you um, is of course, uh, we I am working on, on Give Local and I'm on the call, but um, other members of the Community Foundation staff are on the call. Many folks know Laura Pinn with the foundation. She's here and has been a part of our Giving Day for, for many years since it started and is a great resource. But I am incredibly happy to share that we have a new Director of Communications and Outreach, Ashley Agee, um, who is with us and is going to be spearheading Give Local NRV going forward. So as she gets um, her feet wet with the Community Foundation over these coming weeks, you'll see more information, um, insights from her and can utilize her as a great contact. She's gonna be a wonderful asset to our team and I think will be a huge help to all of you as well. So you can feel free to reach out to any of us. And of course, there are a lot of great resources on the Give Local NRV page already for you all. So I think with that, Don, we're, we're ready to jump in. Perfect. Okay. So here's a look at today's agenda. Um, we're gonna be going over some of the basics uh, and we're going to touch base on, you know, getting started on the platform and the prizes available. Then we're going to move into a deep dive on strategy and utilizing the tools that come with your Mighty Cause account. And then lastly, um, if we have time, we'll have a Q&A session. Um, so again, if you have a question while I'm presenting, just type it into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel, and we're going to cover it at the end. Um, if we do run out of time today, I'm not anticipating we will, but if we do, um, we'll make sure to email everyone um, who didn't get their questions answered so everyone will have an answer to a question that they asked during the webinar today. Um, and then if there is a running theme with questions, I'll be sure to add that to the FAQ on the Give Local NRV site so all of you have access to the answers. So let's start with the basics. Um, Give Local NRV is a 24 hour long event that takes place on June 24th uh, from midnight to midnight with early giving beginning on June 1st. Uh, registration closes on May 24th, so if you haven't registered yet, be sure to do so soon um, so you can have as much time as possible uh, to prepare. The really awesome thing about this giving event um, is that there's currently $10,000 in prize money at stake and lots of opportunities to win. So we'll get into prizes available a little a uh, little bit later on, but um, we're very excited to talk about those for sure. So this is the homepage for Give Local NRV this year. You'll see the URL here on the left. I would definitely bookmark it. Um, once the Giving Day starts, this is where you'll see the leaderboards that will indicate what place you're in, as well as your prize standings. So make sure to bookmark it now so that you have it when you need it on the Giving Day. Uh, this homepage for Give Local NRV also has all the tools that you'll need as well. You'll see the register button right there at the top. Um, if you haven't registered yet, this is where you can go to do so. Um, the Give Local NRV homepage also has these tabs that include the rules and prizes uh, and resources like the FAQ and the toolkit. So once you've filled out and submitted your registration form, then you'll need to complete the items on your organization's to-do list. This list is located in the overview section on your nonprofit profile, right under your metrics. So there's five basic items to complete. You need to add a background image to your page, uh, or you can use one from our gallery of stock background images. Uh, upload your logo, which is gonna represent you throughout Give Local NRV. Um, you'll want to add a story, also called a description. Um, that'll tell visitors to your profile about what your nonprofit organization does. Um, you'll want to build a thank you page uh, to thank donors, and you'll want to set up electronic fund transfer or EFT so that you get your fund disbursements through direct deposit. So if you click the links in your to-do list, 
Uh, then you'll be taken right to the spots on your profile where you can complete that specific task. So um, it's super easy for you to complete the list and you can see the list right here on the slide. Um, and again, if you just click the uh, underlined portion of the task, then it'll take you right to that spot in your account for you to complete that um, to-do list. So, you know, completing the to-do list isn't required, but profiles that are filled out get, you know, we've seen them get, you know, more donations on Mighty Cause. So before you get into the weeds of really planning your campaign, definitely take the time to complete this list. Um, if you do need help or you're unsure how to complete any of the items, then let us know. Um, you can reach our support team at support at mightycause.com. Um, I will have a slide at the end with all of our support team's contact information, um, and I'll be repeating it multiple times throughout the webinar. So, you know, if don't feel like you have to like write it all down now. Um, we also have a support library that you can access. Um, that has walkthroughs and videos that can help you uh, with any like technical questions that you have as well. So I also recommend um, taking the time to get to know your dashboard. Um, so your dashboard is the admin bar that appears on the left side of the screen when you're logged in and on your nonprofit's profile. So you'll automatically land within that overview section, uh, which is where you'll find your to-do list, as well as uh, metrics for your nonprofit. Under fundraising, you can customize your organization page by toggling on edit mode, and you can include page metrics like adding a goal for the giving day, um, which enables a progress bar on your page. Uh, if you toggle off edit mode within your organization profile, you can see how your page will look like to visitors without having to log out of your account. And then within the fundraising section, you'll also find the checkout flow, which we're gonna talk about in a few slides, as well as matching grants, which we're also gonna go into detail about um, a little later on. And then below that, below fundraising on your dashboard is reports, um, which is your one-stop shop for everything related to donation management. You're able to preview and export your donation report, and you can view and manage your disbursements. Um, you can manage your nonprofit settings like URL customization and admin control from your settings section. So part of your to-do list is setting up um, the EFT or electronic fund transfer. Um, again, you can do that under um, organization settings in the settings section. Signing up for EFT allows you to receive your funds faster. Funds are also dispersed by check um, if you don't want to um, get direct deposit, but there is a $5 fee for check disbursement. So we always recommend doing um, direct deposit since that's free and you get it um, twice a month uh, as opposed to once a month via check. So if you have any questions about fund disbursement, you can email support at mightycause.com and our support team will be happy to help you. Okay, so your profile is the face of your nonprofit for Give Local NRV. So you'll wanna make sure it looks really good and represents you well. Um, just so you know, your profile link is the link that you'll share with your supporters to ask them to donate to your Giving Day page. So to share your page, just copy and paste that profile URL into an email um, or a social post or you know wherever you're advertising the campaign. So as you're going through your to-do list, You'll want to customize your profile to match your brand. Um, you can change your theme color to match your logo. You can upload media to your gallery to add to the visual interest on your page. Uh, and your story or your description is really the centerpiece of your page. So in your story, you can put your mission statement, you can add photos and video. Um, and then just as a side note, you, you do need to upload the video to YouTube or Vimeo first, but after you do that, you can embed it on your story so people can watch it right there on your page. And then that story section is the spot where you can really go in depth about your work and you know make, make that strong appeal to donors. So tell them why your organization needs their support, show the impact of your work, et cetera, um, include pictures. So, Definitely spend some time customizing your organization profile because really the more work you put into it, chances are the better that you're going to do during Give Local NRV. Um, you know, you can have the best campaign strategy in the world, but when your profile or the page where people are going to actually make donations looks like you haven't done anything to it, you could end up losing donors. 
One of the really awesome things about Mighty Cause is that your nonprofit has quite a bit of control over the donation process, which is unique among fund fundraising platforms. Um, so from our checkout flow tool, uh, you can opt into collecting the information you want from donors, like their addresses and phone numbers. And you can also set up custom suggested donation amounts and add descriptions to help tie those amounts to items you know, or services your nonprofit provides, which just strengthens your appeal um, to donate. The checkout flow also allows you to preview the whole checkout process without actually making a test donation. So you can see what your final process looks like and use that to edit yourself um, if needed. Uh, the checkout flow is also where you'll go to set up your thank you donation confirmation page. And that um, you know confirmation page that donors see after their transaction goes through uses the same text editor as your story in your profile. So again, you can add text, you can add links, you can add a video or image. Um, you know, you can also add a custom call to action button to that final like donation confirmation page. To that you know tells donors where you'd like them to go next. Um, it just is another stewarding opportunity for you. Um, so one cool idea would be, for instance, um, asking them to sign up for your email list. Um, you could let them know about anything um, upcoming for your organization. Um, if you have a specific page on your website you want them to visit, you can have um, the button connect to that. There's a lot you can do in the checkout flow tool to optimize your campaign and really customize that process for your donors. So organizations participating in Give Local NRV um, can record cash or check donations that they receive for the giving day through the, their account. Um, these recorded cash or check donations do count towards your organization's overall giving day total. Um, be sure to keep copies of all checks that you receive since the Community Foundation of the New River Valley has the right to request a copy of any checks of $1,000 or more that your organization receives. Um, so you're able to go on there into your account, record them, um, and they do count towards your um, giving day total, but um, you will want to keep a record of all of the checks, so just make sure you're aware of that. And then to record a check on your organization account for Give Local NRV from your dashboard, just click the report section and go to offline donations. You can either click the add offline donation link on the actual report, or there's a little blue plus sign next to the offline donations um, section in your dashboard. Either one will open up the modal that you see, um, which is that white box that says add an offline donation either way um, regardless of which one you click they'll both open that um, that modal um, so that you can record that offline donation that you've received so when you get to that part you just enter in your donor's first and last name um, the the amount of the offline donation the source you know whether it's cash or check um, and the donor's email address um, and then the date field will be automatically pre-populated with the current day and time, but you, you can definitely adjust it um, if needed. Um, and then once you're done inputting the information, you just click complete donation and the offline donation will get added to your totals. So moving on from the admin bar um, or dashboard in your Mighty Cause account, uh, before we get to the prizes and rules, I just want to make sure I mention the really great tools um, you can use as you get ready for Give Local NRV, um, and you can find everything in the nonprofit toolkit. So the toolkit has um, tips and tricks, uh, there's article linkouts, um, lots of downloadables, uh, there's FAQs, um, there's walkthroughs, um, we've got our previous on-demand webinar on there um, that you can review. Um, we have a downloadable planning checklist, so if you're one of those people who needs a paper copy in front of you, you can um, you know, click on that planning checklist. You can print it and, you know, check off everything that you uh, do prior to the campaign starting. We also have templates that you can use for email and social media um, to help you get inspired and, you know, help you figure out how to promote your campaign. Um, and then the toolkit is also where you'll be able to find today's uh, training recording um, and other on-demand trainings that um, we've added as well. Um, and 
Uh, you'll also be able to find logos and graphics that you can download to start tying your brand into the Give Local NRV brand. So definitely check out the toolkit if you haven't already. Refer back to it as many times as possible um, as you're planning your campaign. Um, that way you're super prepared and are aware of everything that's uh, going on. Okay, so um, moving on, we're going to talk about some of the awesome prizes that Give Local NRV has to offer. So uh, Give Local NRV is currently offering $10,000 in leaderboard prizes, but they could announce more prizes closer to the giving day. So definitely, you know, pay attention to all of the messaging that they're sending you. Um, right now, there's going to be two overall leaderboards based on budget size, so small and large, with $1,500 available to the winner of each leaderboard. The leaderboards are gonna be on the live event site. So as soon as Give Local NRV begins on June 24th, um, then you can start tracking where your organization stands among the other organizations that are participating. Um, there's also going to be a leaderboard uh, for each county slash city involved in Give Local NRV with $500 available for each of those winners. And then, um, grand prize leaderboard prizes are based on the most money raised, while county um, slash city leaderboards are based on the greatest number of unique donors for each of those participating organizations. Um, and as you can see, um, there are other prizes available, like power hours and a video grant. So everything is listed on um, the rules and prizes tab on givelocalnrv.org. All of the details for all of the prizes are available there right now. So I would highly recommend to get all the information to go to the rules and prizes tab and review everything. The rules are all there, the guidelines, et cetera. So just make sure that you know what's going on um, and you can find everything on that rules and prizes tab. So um, Jessica, if you have anything else that you wanna to add to the leaderboard you know, um, prizes conversation, um, definitely, you know, now's the time. Yeah, I, I would just say, um, I, again, pointing everybody to that rules and prizes tab, there's a lot of detailed information, for example, about the video grant, about the time of each one of those power hours, um, what it, what the process looks like for, um, for going for a grant, and then the timeline by which we'll decide and send that to you. So make sure that you review those in detail. And then think for your organization about whether there's one or more that you want to go after. Um, this is about the same amount that we have given out traditionally each year. As many of you know, our grants and prizes are um, made possible through different sponsorships we have with businesses. And as you can imagine, um, business sponsorship is not uh, as easy as it might have been in years past right now. So we're working really hard to try to get funding available, but the foundation is committed to offering these grants and prizes um, at least. And if we're able to get um, more sponsors, we'll certainly try to do more. So take a look at what's available on the site and think about as we're talking through the strategies that Don is going to go through, um, how you might utilize those strategies in service uh, to receiving one of these uh, grants or prizes. Yep, and um, I didn't put it on the slide, but to kind of tease that rules and prizes tab and just reiterate how important it is to go there and review everything, um, there is a like you can there is a limit to how many um, prizes you can win. So just be sure that you review the rules and prizes tab um, just so you're aware of everything and are going after the prizes that you really want to get. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so we're going to go into some strategic tips and tricks that you can incorporate into your planning for Give Local NRV. But one thing I want to note is that while Give Local NRV is in June, um, I'm sure you're all aware that um, Giving Tuesday Now is happening on May 5th. So while Giving Tuesday Now is, is a, a national effort, um, you are able to utilize your organization's Give Local NRV site to raise funds for Giving Tuesday Now. Um, if you did want to participate in that um, most recent uh, um, day, too. So if you wanted to participate in both, you could definitely still use your Give Local NRV page to, to um, raise funds. So the strategies that we're going to go into can be used for both giving days. 
Uh, and once Giving Tuesday now is over, um, you are able to reset your organization's profile metrics, like the amount raised, number of donors, uh, to sort of you know reset your page for Give Local NRV if that's something that you'd want to do. It's totally optional, but if you do plan on using your Give Local NRV page for both of the campaigns, then you can um, you know reset your metrics so you're starting from zero for uh, the start of Give Local NRV. Um, and if you're not sure what that means or you need help at all doing that, um, you can always email support at mightycause.com. So the leaderboards obviously provide the biggest prizes available in Give Local NRV, and the key um, to winning them is, you know, in getting your donors invested in helping you climb the leaderboard. So definitely keep tabs on your position on the leaderboard and keep your donors and supporters updated on where you are. Continually emphasize to them how much is at stake you know, how much could $1,500 do for your charity, especially um, right now uh, and, you know, wherever we're going to be in June? You know, what would that kind of money help you achieve? So tie that back into your overall messaging about, you know, what you do and why you do it to, to really get people excited about helping you win that money. Um, and another trick is to just, you know, concentrate on sustaining momentum, keeping the fundraising going um, and starting and finishing strong. I've seen a lot of people during a giving day, they'll take screenshots of the leaderboard that they're on just to be able to give their donors a sense of, you know, where they are at any given moment. Um, and it's a great visual to include on your um, social media posts. So um, just keep that in mind. <clears throat> so since Give Local NRV is a 24 hour event, the trick to making the most of it is to sustain your fundraising momentum. Um, one great way to do that and make sure your campaign is on track is to set mini goals for your nonprofit to help generate buzz and build excitement. So set mini goals for certain hours of the day so you can keep people excited about your own goals and continue working towards those uh, prizes available. Mini goals really help sustain your fundraising momentum and they get people excited about helping you you know, win those prizes. So to set those goals, you'll want to think about your overall fundraising goal. What do you need um, to raise or, you know, how many donors you'll need to get um, each hour or maybe section of the day, so like morning, afternoon, evening. Um, well, how much will you need to raise uh, in order to reach your goal? So be sure to keep in mind when your donors are most active to adjust your hourly or you know time of day goals accordingly. So if you know that your donor base is most active in the morning, then maybe you'll want to make that um, mini goal higher than you know let's say uh, the evening goal that you have. Um, so you know you might you'll want to adjust the times accordingly depending on how you know your donors act. Um, and then, um, you know, you might want to boost that time where you know your donors are most active by utilizing a matching grant um, to shake up the campaign. And I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Um, something else that you can do to get your campaign rolling is ask for seed donations. So these are donations from people in your nonprofit's inner circle that essentially break the ice with donors because no one, you know, really likes to be the first donor. Um, you know, those seed donations can help get the ball rolling and, um, you know, they're called seed donations because they make the number of donations grow. Uh, people to ask for a seed donation would be your board, um, staff, uh, especially those who are, you know, director or C-suite level leaders at your organization. You can ask volunteers, really anyone else at your nonprofit who's highly engaged in your work. Seed donations don't have to be huge donations. Um, you know, $10 donations from um, engaged staff members, engaged um, volunteers, that, you know, could, if that's what you're able to do, that's perfect. Getting, uh, basically, we want you to get a little bit in the bank by the time, you know, um, the campaign really starts going um, so that you have something to present to your uh, broader donor base uh, to show that people are already giving um, to your organization for Give Local NRV.
Um, a great strategy for driving donations on a giving day is securing a matching grant. So a matching grant is essentially a large donation that your nonprofit leverages to bring in other smaller donations by offering it up as a match. Um, for instance, if you had somebody willing to give you $1,000, um, instead of just putting that money in the bank um, and calling it a day, you could use it as a matching grant. Um, so the terms of the grant are totally up to you and the grantor. Um, but let's say there's an hourly prize available and you want to do whatever you can to drive donations during that hour so you can win. Um, you take that thousand dollars and say to your um, supporters, you know, hey, between this hour and this hour, donations are going to be matched um, up to a thousand dollars, which basically allows them to double their donation. Um, we have a specific matching grant tool within your Mighty Cause account that you can utilize specifically for this. Um, you can do a lot within that tool, like setting a cap for donation matching, say, you know, $200. So if someone doesn't come along and make a really big donation and eat up your entire match. It's a really cool and complex little tool that allows you to do a lot with your matching grant. And on our platform, we've seen that matching grants, especially on a giving day, can be a really powerful way to drive donations. So. Since a matching grant is ultimately just a large donation, you'll want to follow the same process as you would when you secure major gifts. Um, you prospect, you cultivate, and you ask. People you should consider as prospects for a matching grant are board members, first and foremost. Um, sometimes an individual board member will be happy to provide a matching grant, um, but one thing that you can also consider is asking your board to work together to provide a match. So, um, if your board still has to pay its dues, for instance, you could utilize their dues by turning um, it into a matching grant. Uh, and then major gift donors who have already given large donations to your nonprofit in the past are also really good prospects. Um, and providing a matching grant can be a fun way to liven up their donations. So instead of just writing a check, they're helping your nonprofit grow and drive other donations. Uh, and then you can also give the donor some extra recognition when you're promoting the match. So major gift donors who like a little shout out are even better matching grant prospects. Corporate sponsors are also really good uh, prospects because it's a, it's a fun, proactive way for them to get involved in a public way and draw attention to their philanthropy. Uh, and then you know, at this stage in the game, you can start making phone calls, setting up emails, start cultivating these prospects by letting them know what you're doing and seeing how warm they might be to the idea of getting involved. Um, and then in the coming weeks, you can make your ask and shore up the details of the match. Um, and just so you're aware, you can have more than one match running at the same time on Mighty Cause. So if you're able to get a lot of great responses, don't feel like you have to pick and choose just one match. You can use as many as you're able to secure for the giving day because that just not only increases your chances of securing a prize, but it also increases your chances of raising more money and getting new donors. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, a matching grant is a marketing tool. So in order to make the most of your matching grant, you'll need to promote it. Um, so the first step is going to the matching grant tool on your Give Local NRV profile and adding your match there. Um, there's some marketing tools built into the platform for your matching grant, such as putting a sticker on your donate button when the grant is active. Um, some, there's some changes to your checkout, checkout process to reflect the match and the match gets listed on your nonprofit profile. Um, but you'll also want to add some information to your story, especially if it's a big match. Um, and you'll want to promote it on your social media channels. So send out an email and so on to let all your followers know about the match. Countdowns add urgency. So counting down and sharing your progress um, towards the match goal can be a great way to get people excited and urge them to you know, stop what they're doing and make a donation. If they know that there's only 15 minutes left, um, for the uh, for the match, then let them know that. Um, one of a great ex great example that I like to share is um, you know NPR's uh, uh, you know fundraising that they do. They constantly have matches, and they are always telling you how much time is left in the match. But it informs you and lets you know. And so 
you know, I know there's only two minutes left in their match for this hour. And so if I want to give, I better give. So letting your donors know exactly where you stand with the match, how much money you need to reach the match, how much time is left in the match, especially if you're using a match to go after a power hour, that is a double whammy. You know, you've got a certain number of, um, you know, donations or a number of donors that you need to hit before you get the match from, you know, this major donor or sponsor that you've secured. And the power hour is ending in, you know, however many minutes or um, half an hour or whatever. So letting them know um, where you stand and um, creating that uh, excitement is a great way for, you know, them to understand what it means and then also know that they need to donate now rather than later. So moving on for matching grants, um, I want to talk a little bit about ambassadors. So ambassadors are people who are usually in your nonprofit's inner circle um, who can help boost your campaign. So that includes board members, volunteers, um, especially volunteers who are highly engaged, staff members, and so on. Um, utilizing ambassadors can help you break out of your list of existing supporters and engage new people, so people that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. Um, an ambassador can help you in a few different ways. They can simply share a link to your page with their social circle and ask them to donate and help boost your campaign for Give Local NRV. Um, if you have a board member, for instance, who's really well connected, this can be a huge boost. Um, or ambassadors can help by getting involved in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising is a fundraising technique where you basically deputize your supporters to fundraise on your behalf. Um, the Mighty Cost platform is actually set up for easy peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, so this can be a really great way to shake up your campaign and acquire new donors. So, you know, if you wanted to try peer-to-peer, -peer, um, you would ask ambassadors to set up a fundraising page for your nonprofit um, on Mighty Cause for Give Local NRV. And this may sound like a big ask, but it's often a really fun way to engage your biggest supporters and allow them to tell their own story about your nonprofit, you know, how they came to work with you, why your work is important to them. And this doesn't distract or draw attention away from your campaign because these ambassadors are operating alongside your campaign and reaching out to people they know personally for donations, which in most cases, you know, their friends and colleagues and family, they're not people that your nonprofit would normally um, have access to to solicit for donations. So you're actually picking up new donors through peer to peer most of the time. You know, so for people like your board, volunteers, staff, um, program alumni, this can be a really great way for them to get involved without just being asked to give money. Um, and it, it can make it, you know, be that much more meaningful to them than just making a donation or sharing a link. Um, it can actually be a part of your stewarding process of building and sustaining a relationship with that supporter. So we've, we've seen nonprofits get some really great peer-to-peer -peer action going by just inviting people on social media or sending them a personal email asking for their help. Um, and then for younger people who have a big social network and are really comfortable online, but you know maybe they don't have a lot of cash to give, this can be an excellent way for them to help out and make a meaningful contribution towards your organization for the giving day. And then to help make things easier for them, um, you, you as a nonprofit can set up a fundraising template for anyone who wants to join as a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. Um, you can do that within your account. So, you know, share some images, talking points, you know, facts and logos um, within that fundraising template. Um, and that way, when they join, everything's pretty much filled out for them. Um, so it's less work that they need to do. And then, and then you know, the, the sooner they're done with their page, the sooner they can go and start sharing your um, Give Local NRV page with their friends and family to start collecting funds. And um, nonprofits that utilize peer-to-peer -peer fundraising do tend to raise more money on giving days. So it's definitely worth talking about how you can incorporate into your campaign strategy. Um, and really the timeline is great for you to get started on this. So come late May, you can start asking people to start fundraisers so they can begin raising money starting on June 1st. So if you, if you do manage to generate a lot of interest in peer-to-peer, -peer, or let's say you've done that for Give Local NRV in the past and you wanna try something new, 
um, you can consider trying out team or event fundraising. Um, teams and events can be great for groups of people who want to fundraise together, um, like your board or companies or just you know volunteer groups. Uh, teams and events can be a great way to get people working together and united for your cause. It, they help inspire some friendly competition um, to keep these people motivated at the same time. So the difference between teams and events is basically that an event allows individuals and groups of people to participate and fundraise together, while a team fundraiser is just a group of individuals working together toward a collective goal. Now, the cool thing about using our teams and events products for a giving day is that there are tools built in that make managing it much easier. Um, for instance, there's a uh, template fundraiser pages um, that go along with the teams and events. So, you know, people can use those and get set up more quickly because their um, sections of their pages are pre-filled. You can email team and event members through the platform to keep them motivated. So these are essentially just more complex peer-to-peer -peer campaigns. Uh, they can be a great option if you've got a lot of people willing to fundraise for you or you've done peer-to-peer -peer before and want to try your hand at, um, you know, a different type of campaign. So your email list is going to be one of your most important tools during Give Local NRV uh, because emails are a direct line to your supporters. Unlike social media, you don't have to worry about an algorithm getting in the way um, or preventing people from seeing what you send them, because unless they've unsubscribed from your emails, it'll end up right in their inbox and probably send them a notification on their phone. So I want to talk a little bit about email strategy because that's going to be really important for Give Local NRV. Um, in general, you'll want to keep emails relatively short, simple, and skimmable. Most people read their email on their phone these days, so they're not going to, um, you know, read a novel. They they want to be able to skim um, to get to the point. So people are much more likely to read emails that pertain directly to them. So I highly recommend segmenting your email list by sorting donors into a few key groups. Um, donors who have given a lot or give on a regular basis. Um, you've got one-time donor lists people who have utilized your services but never donated, um, your board, a volunteer list, so on. Um, you don't need to craft entirely new emails to each of these groups, but you can tweak small things about the emails for each group to make it more personal. So uh, for instance, in an email to volunteers, you, you, know, you want to acknowledge how they already help your nonprofit and um, for another example, you wouldn't want to send an email to a major gift donor asking for a $25 donation. Um, so make sure you identify your key segments and figure out how to tailor your message um, to that specific segment. When an email is tailored to who the recipient is and the relationship that they have with your organization, they are much more likely to read it and take action on it. How you segment depends on the program you're using, but most services like Constant Contact and MailChimp use tags to segment groups of people on your email list. So speaking of Constant Contact and MailChimp, I just wanna pause for one second and make sure that you're all aware of the ability MightyCost has to connect directly to MailChimp and Constant Contact, utilizing our data integration feature that's part of our advanced tools. Um, the advanced tools come with our advanced plan, and that is an additional cost per month. However, we do offer a free two-week trial that you're welcome to use um, for Give Local NRV. Uh, there's no credit card required, so you don't get charged once the trial ends. Um, obviously, if you are interested in the free trial, make sure that you sign up um, so that it doesn't end before Give Local NRV happens. Um, but that free trial does allow you to check out that email marketing integration plus all of the other additional tools available, um, like text to give, custom donor questions. Um, you can find the sign up for the advanced plan trial under the um, overview icon in your organization account. Um, so just FYI. So jumping back in, um, one thing you'll need to pay close attention to with uh, regarding your emails is the timing of them, um, especially if you're aiming to win one of the prizes. So I would recommend taking the time to schedule as much as you can beforehand and have a template email ready for things you need to send out on the day of, like a blast email asking people to help you get to your campaign goal, um, or you know if you've 
if you've set up matches, having a quick email that you can send, letting people know where you are with your match, um, you know, how much money you have left uh, that you need to raise for the match in a certain amount of time. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so just make sure that you um, schedule whatever you can ahead of time um, and, uh, and then have that just um, template email ready to go so that you can fire it off as soon as possible throughout the day to keep people updated. And then, as I mentioned before, most people read their email on their phones. So make sure that you choose a mobile friendly email template and test it out beforehand. You know, try it on an iPhone, try it on an Android, um, make sure that it looks the way that you want it to look. Um, leading up to the event, I also recommend um, if you're able doing some A-B testing, especially with subject lines, because you wanna make sure people are driven to open your emails for Give Local NRV um, instead of just scrolling past them. So, you know, try out different subject line formats, try things like adding emojis, see what works better. So when you're sending out those critical emails, you'll have an idea of what tends to work with your email list. Um, A-B testing, if you're new to that term, is basically splitting an email up 50-50 and testing a variable. So let's say you're testing a button color or a subject line, half of your list gets email A with one subject line, the other half gets email B with another subject line, and whichever email gets the most opens wins, essentially. So, you know, for the button color or placement, um, the, the email with the most clicks would win. You just, you want to be careful about um, testing too much, throwing too many variables in there, because then it's really hard to say, you know, why something won the test and performed better. So um, as you're sending emails leading up to the giving day, um, you know, try doing the A-B testing, try thinking about like different ways that you can restructure your subject lines, um, you know, different colors people react to. Um, having that information on hand and knowing that information um, will just make your emails all the more powerful on the actual giving day when it's most critical. And then lastly, your call to actions within your emails should be clear and action oriented. So give now, donate now, help us today. More passive calls to action like, you know, thanks for donating or please contribute, th those are not as effective. So you'll want to be crystal clear and urgent, which is another reason why you definitely want to keep your emails on the shorter side so that your call to action or you know the action you want people to take from your email doesn't get lost or buried within a, a mass of text that you have. Um, so for, for a high stakes day like Give Local NRV, we, we really recommend staying in your comfort zone when it comes to social media. Go, you know, go where your audience is. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you've never logged into TikTok before um, in your whole life, then you do not need to use that for Give Local NRV. If you have a thousand followers on your Facebook page, but only a handful on Instagram, then you should definitely spend way more time and effort on promoting your campaign on Facebook than Instagram. You know, stay in your lane and put your efforts into the platform where you're most likely to reach people that have an impact. And I definitely, same with emails, I definitely recommend scheduling any posts you can ahead of time just to save yourself a lot of trouble during the giving day and leading up to it. You know, get your key content scheduled with, um, you know, Facebook's publishing tools or Creator Studio. Go into TweetDeck and schedule your tweets. You know, save any live posting for stuff that needs to be done the same day, like, you know, thanking a donor, updates on your progress, um, you know, goals, et cetera. So, you know, to that end, you'll you'll want to assign a point person to monitor social media as, as you know, best you can. I know some of you are smaller and might not have that bandwidth, but make sure that there's somebody who knows that they're supposed to be monitoring social media so that you guys can quickly respond to comments and interact with your followers. Since, you know, that's really important on social media and really interaction can also help you in terms of the algorithm. Um, since most platforms do show priority to post with lots of engagement. So if, you know, you're interacting with your followers, people are commenting, people are sharing, people are, you know, retweeting or whatever, the algorithms will pick up on that and more people will see your post because of the engagement you're getting. So, um, you know, even if you only, if you're a 
two man operation or two woman operation, make sure that one of you understands that you're the one who's going to be monitoring social media so that you can make sure to keep that engagement going to help with that algorithm um, during the day. Uh, and then um, we do recommend budgeting a little money if you're able to boost some posts or promote some tweets on social media. $20 for an ad can actually go a really long way. Um, you know, you'll want to make sure your ad is targeted properly. If, and if you're not sure how to target an ad, you can always default to targeting the people who, who like your page or already follow you. So in terms of the type of content that will do well on social media, it really depends a little bit on the platform. But in general, photos and videos do really well. And you may want to consider doing something out of the box, like a Facebook Live video um, or a um, you know, social distancing watch, watch party for a campaign video to help generate some buzz um, while delivering algorithm-friendly content. So I, you know, I keep mentioning the algorithm, um, but you really want to try and appeal to that, which videos, um, anything visual that people can engage in will do better. Um, and especially with, you know, nowadays, if you guys want to hop on a conferencing call ahead of the um, giving day to kind of, um, you know, create a, a video or something that you can share on the actual day, just basically get creative, think of things that, you know, you your donors will respond to. Um, uh, Facebook Live videos are always, you know, pretty interactive, um, especially when um, you know, it's something that you don't normally do. Uh, they, they see that from you and they will stop and say, oh, they've never done this before. Let's see what's going on. Um, a lot of people like to see behind the scenes look for stuff. So even if, you know, you think that your working from home is boring, um, people get excited to see what other people are doing. And so um, if you're able to do a, a Facebook Live of like how your organization's operating on the giving day or um, you know, whatever, then that is exciting to people as well. Um, and finally, when you're planning your campaign, follow up is important to consider. Um, you know, when you're planning your content, you'll also want to plan your thank you to donors. So things like making a video or a photo of your staff can be really great for this. Um, be sure to talk about the impact of the funds that you raised and, you know, close that loop on your campaign. So that means if you were fundraising for something specific, like a piece of equipment or improvements to your building or something like that, um, you know, make sure that people are aware of, you know, how the funds that you raise will go towards that um, or what impact that they've had. And then, you know, you'll also want to send emails periodically on your progress as well. Um, and then you'll want to make sure that you've got an onboarding plan in place for new donors so that they come back to donate again. So if you collect addresses, you know, mail them a welcome packet, uh, that can be a great way to get them onboarded. You can also create an automated email journey where they can get more information about what you do and why it's important to support your work. So any way that you're able to really get them to understand what your organization does and the impact that you make um, and have that stewarding, uh, plan in place. Anything you're able to do ahead of the giving day will just make your life so much easier after the giving day. So as we wrap this up, um, I want to make sure our support team's contact information is here for you to reference. Um, they are a really great resource before and during the campaign um, for anything, you know, giving day related. So, you know, if you need help setting up your EFT, um, if you need help figuring out how to strategize around one of the prizes, or if your donor needs a receipt reset, you can reach out to them at any time. Um, their email is support at mightycause.com. Um, they are available uh, Monday through Friday, nine to five. However, on your actual giving day, um, they will be available 24 hours a day. So they'll be available at, at all times on your giving day. So if you run into anything or you have a question or your donor, like accidentally added a zero to a donation like let us know they'll be there they'll be available um and then you can also call as well and their number is listed there okay so we do have um about seven minutes left for questions so let me see what has come in oh uh, let's see 
Great. Okay. Um, I only have one question, which is awesome. Makes me feel like I covered everything really well, which is great. Um, so if, if you are an organization that has already registered and participated and utilized your Give Local NRV for Giving Tuesday, you do not need to register again. You're already registered for Give Local NRV in June um, and your page is ready to go. So you don't have to take the registration steps again. Um, you only need to register if you have not used your page at all um, or in, and haven't participated in, in Give Local NRV before either. Um, but one of the guidelines on the rules and prizes page that um, is just a great reminder is um, you will have to re-register for Give Local NRV every year. Um, that way they, you know, um, the community foundation can have the most updated information for your organization. But for this year, if you participated in Giving Tuesday, um, using your um, Give Local page, you don't have to register again. Uh, but yeah, that is, I don't see any other questions coming in. If you guys have any questions, um, you can type them in in the GoToWebinar chat module um, and we'll see them here. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is an FAQ page. If you think of something later, you're welcome to email, um, you know, the Community Foundation or um, us, Mighty Cause, support at mightycause.com for any questions too. Uh, if, you know, you think of anything later. Um, but yeah, I, that, that was all that I had and I don't see any questions. So I'm, I'm going to give myself a pat on the back for uh, having a, uh, a complete webinar. Great. Thank you so much, Don. You did a great job. I appreciate it. Yes, it was my pleasure. I'm excited uh, to get this thing going and um, I'm excited for all the opportunities available for everyone. Um, but yeah, we are, we're here to help you all and uh, yeah, best of luck um, for your giving day. Um, this again, the webinar um, is recorded. So it'll, I'll be posting it in the toolkit um, probably tomorrow. So, you know, if you are super bored during your, you know, quarantine time, feel free to watch it again. Uh, you know, it's very engaging. So, uh, or, you know, whatever, whatever you want, show it to your cat. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Jessica, do you have anything, you know, last minute thoughts? No, nothing else to add, just some really great strategies. So, um, you know, we at the foundation, we were super excited to work with Mighty Cause because there are so many features that are very easy to use in the platform. So I just encourage everybody to take a look at all the tools Don talked through, um, think through your strategy for the giving day, test some things out, and we'll have additional um, reminders and things coming out from the Community Foundation as the giving day approaches to promote it and we just look forward to having a great day. We know it's an incredibly important year, perhaps more so than ever to really have a great giving day. So we're excited to, to get it going. So thanks everybody for participating. Awesome. Okay, well, if anyone, again, if you think of anything later, you can always email us um, support at mightycause.com and we will be happy to help. And with that, um, I really appreciate everyone's attendance and engagement, and uh, I hope that you have a great rest of your day, and best of luck with Give Local NRV.